Every single click is where I show 99.9% .9 of all the clicks in a typical Hearts of Iron 4 game. Beginning, middle, and end. A proper conclusion. So your typical YouTuber would play as Germany, I don't know, cap the UK and the Soviet Union, and be like, it's 1941, guys, I'm done now, I need to make my tea. You've had your one hour of gameplay, and then they tap out. Not on this channel, guys. We're going to have a full campaign, show most of the clicks, some of the boring ones I will edit out, show you a full campaign as Yugoslavia, and we're going to play semi-historical. What does that mean? We're going to play until 1939, and do everything that Yugoslavia would have done up until 1939, and then from there, I kind of just do my own thing. Why am I playing that way? Because you can kind of abuse the game between 1936 and 1939 before Germany does its thing. And I don't want to manipulate the game mechanics too much, but I don't want to min-max to the most effectiveness way possible. Does that make sense? And you're probably thinking, why are you doing this, Dave? That's just stupid. Just conquer the world. I enjoy playing this way. This is what I find the most fun. If you don't like it, please. There's so many YouTube videos out there playing Hoi 4. Please select another one if it, this one isn't right for you. Please don't sit through this video if you're not enjoying it. We only want the believers in this chat. Type one in the comments if you are a believer. All right. What are you doing? Hearts of Iron 4 at the very beginning. You do the notifications at the top of the screen because these are the most important things your nation has to worry about. Let's go from right to left for a change. So we're low on steel. Now, this could be a problem. It could not be a problem. But it's always going to be determined by my military factories and where they're assigned. So this might not be an issue, but we'll come back to this. We're also low on manpower. Basically, it's telling me my manpower is low. We're basically using the less 5 or 10% of our manpower left in our pool. And you can see we're on volunteer only gets 1.5% recruitable. If you look on our manpower, you can see that total manpower, 1.5% recruitable. So we are using the maximum amount that we currently already have. Plus, when the game unpauses, more manpower will be fed from this pool into the divisions that are partially strengthed. I'm going to right click this just to dismiss it because I don't think this is a problem for now. Next up, decisions are available. We can select these two decisions that don't require any political power. You gain on standard one political power per day, but then you'll gain another plus one if you don't select a national focus. In this case, we're going to come back to this because once again, these don't apply unless we need them. You do the primary stuff first and then work on the secondary stuff. Next up, we have unassigned divisions. What it's basically saying is you have divisions that are not on an army with a general. You hold shift and left click on this. You select them all right click to make them in an army we have an army of 22 divisions and here they all are well, i'm going to press v now which is area defense which is this button here and then click on belgrade and what they're going to do all rally in that said location then what i'm going to do is look at my divisions and just look at what they compose of so we have mountaineers we have horses i think we're going to do another horse build i really enjoyed the last horse build it was really fun for me and i think i want to do it again yeah delete all the divisions apart from one we're going to do the one division trick. I promise you guys, I'm not going to do the same strategies over and over again. But I tell you what, guys, I'm having lots of fun doing this one division thing with horses. I'm getting a blast from it, so I'm going to keep doing it. Next up, select a national focus. So as I said you before, you gain two political power per day. But if you select a national focus, you only get one per day. But some of these bonuses are very, very spicy. So I'd recommend selecting them. So you either focus on your industry, your air force, your army, or your navy. The navy as Yugoslavia. Madness, right? Anyway. We're going to focus on the politics, which is the left side. And the reason why is we have lots of issues. Stability is rubbish. Political power issues. Production efficiency issues. Serbian general staff issues. And also we hate the Germans, apparently. So we're going to do Western focus now. And this gives us stability and political power. So let's do that 70 days. If you think about it, by selecting this focus, you're actually getting a net gain of political power because it gives you 120 when it's completed. But if you didn't select a focus, you would have gained an extra 70 political power compared to the additional plus one you would have already gotten. We're getting out the maths here, boys. I'm sorry. Holy four is a math lesson. Who would have known? Anyway, next one is missing equipment production. We are currently got fighters and currently they are not full strength. So this is letting you know that you have missing equipment. Once again, this is one of these low priority notifications I don't think you should care about for now. Next up, we have naval dot yards. So we're on the production screen now. We're going to go into convoys, assign them all into convoys because we're not going to bother making a navy. We're bordering Italy right now. They're going to be at war with us. They've got a massive navy compared to ours. We're never going to be able to dominate them. The only thing we can wish for is maybe making a navy that can benefit in the fords and archipelagos. But overall, guys, don't make a navy. It's just not worth your time. And you're going to lose manpower by putting um, ships into it. Because every time you produce a ship, like this one, for instance, if we were to complete this one, we lose 1,800 manpower to this ship that technically has unlimited combat capabilities. So why lose the manpower? It's not worth it. Convoys are worth it, though. 
so we can import lend lease and resources however if you border a nation you'll get it for free and you won't need to use convoys it's probably one of the biggest newbie mistakes people make this they're like oh i need steel really badly let's get it from the united states seven convoys and then all of a sudden you're importing like a ridiculous amount of steel and look at this you've run out of convoys but if you got them from the soviet union you can get them for free no convoys required a nice little way of uh, conserving your convoys next up military factories so this is a difficult one because we need to min max this and we only have three military factories at the start of the game yugoslavia's industry is pretty bad but it has the potential to grow i think what i'm going to do is change this to artillery and assign the rest into mills now support artillery as a part of division is like the easiest way of adding soft attack onto a division and making it have a lot of attack power so this is horses with 39 soft attack soft attack is your bread and butter it's your main attack force if we were to add on support artillery it hops up by an additional 15 that's huge as proportion of the overall size of the division that's a massive increase in soft attack but it can go even higher because the passive bonuses for extra 10 percent here 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent plus the more advanced models of artillery which have got significantly more artillery if you hold shift and click them you compare them 25 for the base artillery 30 for the advanced one so as time progresses that support artillery will really pull its way and do lots and lots of soft attack we're gonna go for machine tools as the first research i've realized we're actually doing mills oh sorry guys sorry i'm jumping ahead anyway we have equipment here that we're producing and we don't have a myo assigned military industrial organization was something that was added in the latest expansion what you can do is assign this this will also increase the production cap of the, of the production of these guns by plus three but now it's gone from 50 to maximum production efficiency to 53, meaning overall production can be significantly higher. Also, you'll be gaining funding into that Mayo. If you go into here, we can see it. The funding for that Mayo is here. And as the funding goes up, it gets up to 800 and it levels up. When it levels up, you get a trait point that can improve stats. My advice for you is go for the soft attack, go for the production, production, defense, reliability is good, soft attack's good, more soft attack, more breakthrough, hard attack breakthrough the only hot, tough decisions you've got to make here are these exclamation mark ones we have to select uh, quantity versus quality this one's quality this one's quantity you get the idea right some of them increase the production cost of the equipment but they also uh, increase the overall base stats and what i've done is hold shift and queued them up that way i don't have to assign them the one thing you'll need to come back to this for is if you get to level six you get an additional bonus some of these bonuses are pretty good Cost you a little bit of political power, but overall it gives you some decent bonuses. The game doesn't let you know that you've reached level 6 for your Mayos though, which is really annoying in my opinion, but maybe one day Paradox will address that. Also, I'll assign the Mayos for the artillery as well. Why not? So let's have a quick look. This one's pretty good for production efficiency, so this is going to increase the amount of production for the equipment overall. This one increases soft attack. This one increases more production. Then we have breakthrough or defense. Ooh, 10 breakthrough is pretty good though. Be aware, improving something by 10% is a percentage. And if the equipment doesn't have a lot of breakthrough to begin with, 10% of nothing is still nothing. So if you hover over the artillery, the breakthrough is six. So 10% on top of six isn't even one. So how beneficial is that? Probably very limited. However, the defense is 10. So that tells you if we increase the defense by three, still that's not even one either. See, these numbers are very small. So don't go too crazy about, oh, we've got to select the right ones. We've got to min max. End of the day, if you select the wrong ones, you're still going to be okay. Anyway, queue them up. We're going to go for breakthrough. We'll go for reliability. This one has hard attack. It's like 100% hard attack for artillery. You're like, wow, that's amazing. 100% more hard attack. But then you look at the stats. The hard attack is two. So it's going from two to four. So it's not a massive increase, really. Don't be deceived. Sometimes the numbers are a little bit misleading. At the end of the day, soft attack is the raw number you want to focus on. And some of the other ones are secondary. This one gives soft attack to anti-air. Once again, don't have a lot of soft attack on anti-air, so that's kind of useless. And then just queue all those ones up. Same again, policies. You can come back to that when you get to level six. But for now, I don't care about that. All right, we're about to start the game now. No, we're going to have to do free civilian factories. At the start of the game, the meta is to kind of build civilian factories and then build mills. You're building your base industry, which increases construction to build your military industry. However, there is one thing you can do is because you're on civilian economy, you suffer from a penalty of 30% for construction for civvies and mills. It's kind of the best thing to do at the very start of the game is to build infrastructure. Let's have a little look at our state map mode. And you can see here that Serbia has the most building slots. However, building slots will result in more slots overall, so more construction potential. However, it might be more beneficial to build infrastructure in regions that you have resources to take advantage of. 
And you do have actually quite a lot of resources in Yugoslavia. You've got all this aluminium in Montenegro and also chromium. Uh, chromium is probably the rubbish, most rubbish resource in Hoi, but it's something. However, this state here has potential for expansion of steel later in the game. Where is the steel? Yeah, Serbian steel. So remember, you're getting 16 steel plus the multiplier you get for infrastructure. So I'm going to say I'm going to build here. I'm going to build here. What I'm doing is holding shift, by the way, and it maxes out the amount of infrastructure in that region. So instead of having to click three times, one, two, three, I just hold shift and it builds the whole queue. It'll build from top to bottom. Research. At the start of the game, production efficiency the cap is raw production power. Plus, it unlocks the ability to become a concentrated and dispersed industry, which is your raw bread and butter for production. Plus, increases production. Plus, it also gives you uh, more factories per state which you need to expand with construction building our industry we're going to need to do that anyway and then we're going to go for the basic electronic mechanical engineering which unlocks the ability to go for radio and radar as well as uh, more uh, research technology if you want that but radio is very important particularly early game it makes me question sometimes actually going for this straight away isn't that worth it i mean three percent research is pretty good However, do you know what i might do i might do a plane build yeah something a little bit different you don't have any plane miles though which is really annoying icarus is really good i don't think you can unlock icarus the mayo until quite far down the focus tree you can't find something in the focus tree well my advice is you just search for it so it's spelled i k a r u s so you type for icarus and icarus is here and it also improves the size of it too which is nice you this focus this focus and then this focus and it unlocks the mayo which is for fighter planes i think we just might make a little bit of cast fighters or cast one or the other. All right, now you get to set the speed of the game, which we're going to click five speed, and then I'm going to press space to unpause, and then we're going to go. We're also going to F3 and merge up all the planes. Press G to merge them up. Um, assign an admiral, why not? We'll exercise that to level three and split them off if need be. And assign a naval dockyard if we need to. Exercise to level three. Exercise that one division to take advantage of the one division trick and pop in right here, because I think there's less attrition in planes than there is in Belgrade, so I'm just going to go for that one. And boys, here we go. We're actually playing the game now. So the setup phase is the more complex phase in Hoi 4. That's the bit where you have to click all the buttons and make sure everything's set up correctly. The beginning of the game, the preparation phase, will decide more action phases where the war actually happens in Hoi. So that's the reason why I just take care of that right now. So what I've done is hold shift left click on exercise. And this will, guys, will exercise to level 3. And then they will stop exercising. And that's the same for the ships as well. However, we're going to run out of fuel pretty quickly. Do we have any actually fuel in Yugoslavia? No. This is F8 map mode, by the way. It's this one in the corner. And it shows you all the resources on the map. You can also click on trade too. And it shows you the resources you're producing. Loads of aluminium, loads of chromium, and a little bit of steel. Steel is your kind of primary resource. It's what's used for almost everything in Hoi 4. Uh, but then there's the secondary aluminium, which is mainly used for planes. And you've got English fuel, which is for your ships and your tanks and your planes. And then chromium is used for kind of heavy tanks and capital ships. Hence the reason why it's, I feel like it's the less l used resource. All right, next up, treaty with the Italians or reinforce old alliances. It can have an impact this because you can either reduce consumer goods or increase production efficiency cap. At the end of the day, it doesn't make any difference because you can have one or the other. I think you can actually have both. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. My advice then is go for this one. It doesn't actually make any difference. The dotted line basically just means you can have one or the other. You just got to select the two. This builds relations with the UK. And this builds relations with Italy. This is a 35 day focus compared to the 70 day one. I don't even know if this makes a long-term impact. I'm not even familiar. I don't usually do the historical path for Yugoslavia, but I'll try my absolute best to show it off as the as I best I can. All right, we can do partial mobilization immediately. However, it's usually not the best strategy to do that because if you look, the cost for political power for this is significantly higher due to Macedonian opposition. If we can get rid of Macedonian opposition, no, that's a really long time away. I'm not sure if I want to do that get rid of it here so 70 days 70 70 70 70 it's a long time away and that's going to hurt into our production in the long run i think i'm just going to rush for partial mobilization immediately and that will obviously give our economy a bit of a jump start we are now in a position where we can start building actual factories so i'm going to build them in serbia we don't want mills we want civvies and build them here and here and we'll finish making the infrastructure why not once again, as I mentioned before, infrastructure pays itself off a lot quite well at the start of the game due to civilian economy having penalties for factories. But partial mobilization gives a boost to construction of uh, military factories and it removes the penalty for building civvies. So that's the reason why you wait to get mobilized before you start building factories. It tends to be the case. That's not always like foolproof the best way of doing it. Just be aware. All right, we're going to go for range improvements. So you want your basic fighter. You want this fighter. You want the range and you want the best engine. And then you can start working on bigger machine guns armor and maybe more advanced models 
you want to build your planes around dog fighting initially and then uh, go from there friendship treaty with italy and then we get to attract allied capital which reduces consumer goods which is going to give us access to more of our factories see this 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 number is how many civilian factories you're losing to consumer goods which is four the base amount is based on your mobilization which in this case is 25 percent. so 25 percent of our civilian factories are being eaten lost to consumer goods and the more that we can reduce consumer goods the more that we can take advantage of more civilian factories i'm gonna be honest with you this is probably only going to reduce uh your civ usage by consumer goods by probably one if not that so i'll be fair with you exercising the fleet here was kind of useless it was just a massive waste of time i just did it for a bit of a giggle and a laugh gained you a little bit of xp for navy are you ever going to use it i guess if you want to make marines you could take advantage of that but now they've gone back to port because they've got to level three and that's all they need to get to research is done and now we can start working on dispersed industry and we're going to be focusing really heavily on an industry in this game because we need to make sure we produce enough fighters fighters in yugoslavia is a good idea because look at the aluminium amounts you've got they're so high so take advantage of it you can pump out lots of planes however oil is probably going to become a problem so you might have to trade with romania or the soviet union but remember your yugoslavia you're not really in a good way so be aware that you might need to be doing a lot of defending it is what it is standard yugoslavia game Allied capital is done and we've got 100 political power. So make sure you assign your chief of your army straight away. This will give you ticking army XP. How you do your doctrines and modify your templates. Very important early game. All right then. So we're going to do the historical path, which is evolution. Okay, regretfully, we're going to do the historical path, which is evolution. It doesn't feel like evolution, but that is the historical path. Uh, there are so many penalties. You have to make compromises with everyone. You need that you're making a net loss on a lot of these compromises to fix your national spirits. And some of the national spirits are worse than others. For instance, let's have a look. Serbian general staff is is kind of good, actually. It's net good. I mean, you don't really rec recruit more generals in Hoi for anyway. Uh, Slovenian nationalism, once again, is not even that bad. I don't even care about it. However, this is quite bad for political power gain. The Macedonians. And also losing 30% stability is enough just to make you bite. Right now you can see our stability is taking a bit of a hit because of that. There's only really two that are really bad and the other ones are just kind of... Alternatively, if you go a historical, you go down this path, which basically gives independence to all the factions inside of Yugoslavia, but then compromises with them. But eventually at the very end, you unify them all again anyway. So like you don't, you lose them initially for a short period, but then you gain them all back later on, which is insane if you think about it. Anyway, evolution, losing more stability. Ooh. Okay, be aware that when you're behind on steel, you are losing not only the net production, if you hover over, you see you're losing 10% of your resource production of this weapon, but also you're losing production of your production efficiency. So it's having a, a double thing. So short term, you're losing initial production, and then long term, you're having a penalty to your production efficiency game over the long run. All right, construction's done. But what does construction one follow with? Construction two, and then a machine to also improve the cap. The higher the cap goes, the more production efficiency you get to reach up to the cap. But the closer you get to the cap, the you have a slow down the amount of production efficiency that you can potentially gain. I feel like I want to send volunteers to Spain, but I would need to have 30 divisions and I'd need to do this focus to do that. And this gets removed when the Spanish Civil War ends. It's one of those, uh, we don't usually do this situations. Is it something I'm going to take advantage of? I'm debating it. I'm wondering how beneficial it would be in the short term though. Can you see this there? From army exercising, we're beginning 0.05 per day. And that is based upon this one division exercising. If you make this division bigger, you'll gain more per day. Hence the one division trick. It used to be a lot more OP in the olden days. It's no longer as strong. I'm going to put you guys on force strike here. And this will defend this coastline. Italy has laid six mines in this region. Right. And you're at you're war with Ethiopia. Why would you lay mines here? How's this got to do with the Ethiopians? But no, they're still laying mines here. Kind of annoying. Anyway, yeah. Strike force allows you to project... Uh, naval supremacy uh, however we'll never have enough naval supremacy to deny, deny a naval invasion so this is what it is all right evolution all right now you're starting to fix your problems inside of your nation and how you want to deal with the croatians so the croatians are the one hurting your stability so what you can do if you want is you can squish them which hurts your political power alternatively this is a path that can cause a civil war so my advice for you is go heavy with this one and just get rid of them. This will hurt your political power gain in the long run. However, it's just best to get rid of this problem because it will cause a civil war in your nation and it fires a few decisions that you can get rid of and it ends up costing you too much political power. So my advice is just go down that path. Trust me, it is easier path. Trust me. We're going to get 35 army XP and then we're going to go for proper heritage, which is one of your officer cores. And then I'm going to expand this division as big as I can go and you can get free horses. Free horse? Oh, wow. You want a free horse? Press two in the chat if you'd like a free horse. 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 Save. 
this is a free horse you made it significantly bigger and what that does is it means you disproportionately will gain army experience from training this one division by having a very very large horse which results in more a net gain of army experience which in the long run will pay yourself back and therefore be worth its weight in gold so this is working really effective for us. So what we've managed to do here is up the infrastructure in this region. I'm going to try and pronounce it Rava. And now we've got 100% infrastructure. Construction speed is boosted by 100%. So there's loads of building potential in here. We can build a lot quicker. Also, we have an option here to spend political power to get another building slot. Oh man, sometimes that's really worth it, but not today. Also, worker conditions, super important in Yugoslavia. Stability is a really big issue with Yugoslavia. And look at the penalties you get having low stability. They're really painful. And all of a sudden, our stability has been fixed because the Croatians have been squished. All right, next up, the left path basically gives Slovenia to Italy, I believe. And the right path basically says, okay, we'll compromise a little bit by banning the nationalist Slovenian parties, which halves the penalty that we're getting. But once again, I told you this, this production efficiency growth minus 10% one is not even that bad. So just, just take it on the chin. Trust me, it's not worth getting uh, upset over. Disperse one is done. Disperse two. The brilliant thing about disperse is it unlocks more building slots. Oh, he didn't get any extra more building slots here. Oh, that sucks. I'll we'll have to build them in Serbia. So let's talk about industry for a second. So... If you look up to here, 19 factories in total, 17 are civilian factories, 17. 17 are being added to the construction crew, crew, Q, four of which are being eaten by consumer goods. And that's how we end up with this number of how many we've got. Then we build more civilian factories and that will result in overall more construction, minus the ones that are being added to consumer goods. We're also getting one civilian factory too, and a bonus one from trade. I'm going to take a guess it's aluminium, yeah. The Turks are trading with aluminium with us, which gains us an additional plus one civilian factory. You have no control, by the way, of who trades with you. And it is just completely random. The AI will choose to trade with you. Sometimes it won't. It's just something as an added bonus. But don't ever try and aim towards it because, well, it's random. Ban the Slovenian Nationalist Party. Next up, the Macedonians. So what does this do? So we basically compromise here meaning that we get half the penalty for three years, more than three years, actually. Or we surrender Macedonia to, I think, Bulgaria, I think. This this side is totally not worth it. This one costs too much political power. This two gives up land. Okay, just make concessions. It's funny, isn't it? Some of the ethnic groups I'm willing to make concessions to, but some of them I just outright ban them. What? Being Croatian? No. Banned. We need air XP. So I'm going to hire the ground support guy. With that now, we're going to get ticking air experience, which can then be used to build a more ideal plane. I've already got this model here. We'll upgrade the engine, which gives more weight capacity. Improve the machine guns, max those out. And then top that off as well, we add drop tanks. That costs A XP. If I make it just completely raw and brand new, still A XP, it makes a difference anyway. Okay, whatever. All right, this is the one. I don't like the fact this is a biplane. We select one that's not a biplane. Oh, that's a beauty. So you're basically selecting the cosmetic icon that you use as a part of the production queue. And you're also selecting the actual model that gets used actually in game. I'm just waiting until I've got AXP now, and then I'll save this design. You use air XP for assigning your air doctrines for officer cores, also designing planes. And also you, you do spend it, the vast majority of it for air doctrines, which improve the stats for your planes. I've just realized it's not selected the same model I wanted. There we go. There we go. Pop that there. Off you go. And then we can start producing more ideal plane. Another episode, I don't usually do this, but I think I might try and focus more on my industry by not going ahead of time. There are a bunch of upgrades I wouldn't have to take advantage of to make sure my infantry have an actual attack power. But as it stands right now, I think I'm okay with what we've got. Okay, concessions to the Macedonians is done. The reason why I rush this one is that means that I spend less political power to get the advisors, and getting political power early game is really big. So we can invite the German military mission, which removes anti-German military, and it gives us option for mechanized equipment. Interesting. We can sign the Tripartite Pact. The Tripartite Pact is not actually the historical path, because historically... This was not signed, but eventually it led to the coup. So I believe the end, the regency, is actually the historical path. And this means that Prince Paul steps down. However, it makes all the advisors cost significantly more, which is pretty rubbish. But you gain more stability. So is it worth it? I don't know. Anyway, we're done with this part of the focus tree now. We're going to hop over to the right now. And I think we're going to go for Icarus. Yeah, I want to get my planes and start building uh, funding for my Mayo. So we're going to focus really heavily on excavation. What this just does is it increases your raw resources out of the ground by 10 percent super helpful 
or the steel because that's your raw resource for most of the stuff you're going to be producing but then also more aluminium is going to be worthwhile because it gets puts more aluminium on the market and that might potentially give us more stability in fact through trade you can put more on the market if you go for free trade so half of the aluminium is not usable it's been put to the market if it doesn't get used it just disintegrates into nothing However, if you go free trade, 80% will be put on the market, but then I obviously get less resources overall. Free trade does tend to be more beneficial early game because you do get a raw output of construction and research, but the political power constraints of Yugoslavia make it very difficult. So we'll go local developers next. All right, disperse industries done. Queue those up and focus on this state because this is the one with the higher infrastructure. So that's the one you want to be building in first. All right, soft attack, artillery. We definitely add on loads of soft attack to our horse. What I'd like to do is make another horse division, but maybe a slightly smaller one. Oh, another little hotkey they recently added is shift, and shift removes them. Can we do a 20 combat with maybe? Oh, yeah, duplicate. Did I just save that? Oh, I didn't. I made a duplicate. So this is the one we're actually going to use as a part of combat, and I'll add artillery onto that as well. Yeah. How many of these can we make? If you check the resources here, we've got enough artillery. We don't have enough equipment, and we're behind by 100 days. That's okay. I'm all right with that. I'm not going to train those now because I want my army to be disproportionately larger, but with this just one division, because this gives more XP per day. You see, this is 0 0.1.85. I'll say that again. 0 0.185 army XP per day. So many things to select and so little political power. Yugoslavia is a nightmare of a nation. It's a good example of a nation that's kind of like politically roadblocked because of the ethnic minorities in the nation. It's causing like a, a melting pot in the nation that you have to resolve. So it kind of feels good to build the nation up from the ground up. However, it is just frustrating because you want to go for some of these are cool advisors, but you can't because uh, you are restricted on political power until you get 185. So now I can go for... I was going for a silent workhorse, but I just realized he's not here anymore. Oh, it's this one. The constitutional philosopher giving stability and political power will pay for itself in the long run. Okay, we get to go for Icarus now, which gives us the boost for our planes. It is tempting to try and go for Cass, but we'll never be able to do enough damage or get air control if we went for bombers. We need the fighters to maintain the air superiority first. You kind of do it in this order. You get air superiority with a dominant agility dogfighting fighter. And then you make bombers to attach with it. I'm really tempted to rush Disperse 3, but that's such a bad use of research. I need to get out of that habit of researching things ahead of time. Because I'm, I've only got three research slots and I've not got a lot of production to begin with. So I have to be very careful. I'm just wasting too much production. I will say a lot though, I will benefit from all the production that I get inside of uh, mainlands of Serbia. Tough decision though. Oh, a really easy way of getting stability is going for this one, political loyalty. I think you could do this one if you're fascist or non-aligned. It just gives you a proportion of stability based on your party's popularity. So if your party popularity is 100%, let's say 100% non-aligned and I'm non-aligned, you'll gain plus 10 stability. This will double that to 20% based on the percentage that you go up by. If you hover over stability, you say it's been increased by 18% based on my party popularity and the 20% boost that you can gain depending on how much you've got. So that potentially you can gain more stability as the game progresses because you can get rid of the other ideologies by doing, I don't know, raids or trying to boost other ideologies, for instance. Artillery and then more guns. Or do we start rushing the artillery? Sorry, rushing the plane modules. It's hard. I don't want to go too far ahead of time. Once again, I don't want to be, I want to be diversifying my country as much as possible without uh, road, road blocking myself. All right, I actually don't know even what this one even does. The Icarus IK3. All right, we've got the Icarus now, so we can assign that onto the Mayo, which will give us the bonuses for the plane. We can now create the Mayo and attach it on. It costs five XP, but we get all these bonuses to agility and attack, so that's definitely worth. And then we start producing them with a penalty of 5% production. I'm okay with that. And also we've got a Mayo point that we also automatically get for free. So we're gonna go for, oh, this is tough. I wanna go for the production ones first, then go for the agility, 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 agility. So you're making choices here. Do you buff the dogfighting fighters, which is the middle row, agility, speed, and range? Or do you go for a more air attack, ground attack by the left-hand side, so fighter bombers? Or the right-hand side is more focused towards, I guess, more bombing, I suppose, because it even gives air defense. So I guess fighters, fighter bombers, and just bombers but we want to focus on agility because we want to be able to win those dogfights quantity is definitely not quality you want quality 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 this feels like a really useless focus in the past this used to give you a big research bonus for the latest most advanced fighter 
But now it just gives you a variant of a plane for 70 days. Something you'd pay 10 XP for. It feels like some kind. sometimes the old mechanics in Hoi 4 overlap the new mechanics and create weird, weird bugs like this. Anyway, we're going to go for industry now. Our industry definitely needs a boost. So we're focused a little bit more heavily on civilian factories than we would normally because our industry is so bad to begin with. We're going to be playing a lot of catch up. All right, XP. We get to go for the branch Air Force Independence, which gives 0 0.5. Oh, sorry, 0 0.1 air experience per day. It's one of those things that pays itself back in the long run. So the earlier you get it, the better. I'll be honest with you, I signed that a little bit late. So it might not pay itself back as well as I would like. But we've gone for it now. And we're going to try and benefit from uh, more air XP in the long run. And then what you do eventually is move on to air crews to get cheaper doctrines. And then also centralized control for better projection. Also, air pro power projection is pretty good too. Some of these ones on the right side here are really good, actually. Yeah. Actually, this one's pretty good too. Air wing experience lost when killed, minus 25%. Basically, you retain your XP better on your air wings. As new planes have been produced, the XP has dropped from 3 to 2. So I can just exercise to level 3, but it will drop down again when a new plane is produced. Extend the mining industry, getting more resource output. It's worth it. All right, support equipment's done. 1918 artillery is done. It's crazy to think about, isn't it? We're going to work on more advanced dispersed industry with the bonus that we've just gained from uh, industrialization program. I realize we're in 938 now. Maybe 939 will start making mills. Difficult right now because there's a bunch of advisors here that could benefit you. Extra war support is useful whilst at war, but not now. Civilian construction is pretty good for 10%, but that's not enough to be worth it. 10% extra recruitable is good for the democracy. However, we don't really want the democracy. Also, extra stability whilst at war plus 15% is really strong. We'll go for that when we're at war, but not now. I think what we actually need is a spy agency. Elusive gentleman. We also need to mobilize. We need that manpower now because we're definitely going to take advantage of it. Can you see the manpower? 1.6, 1.61. As time goes on, you mobilize more and more and more based on the law that you've gone with. War support feeds into how quick you mobilize. Okay, we need to focus on the plane upgrades now, actually. We need the bigger machine guns. We're going to select Icarus to do that, and that'll gain us a research bonus. And when it research too, we'll attach that on and it'll be nice and cheap. We're also going to go for upgrades, and I think we're going to have to do... This is a tough call, this, because localized training centers is not going to help us because we're going to be attacked by the Italians and the Germans. So we're going to need spy networks in both of them. It's really inefficient to put spy networks in two nations because you, you're kind of branching out and you can only have a maximum of three spies anyway. So I think we're just going to go for generic spies and not do localized training centers. What we're doing right now is building up our spy network, our spy agency, by getting six upgrades and that will give us a plus one spy. Then we get another plus one spy from Elusive Gentleman. When we put spies in other nations, we can deny them planning bonus and we can also deny them uh, other bonuses such having an intel advantage right we can start queuing up now mills exercise this to level three now and this is our first full air wing is someone told me in the comments that it's actually a lot more efficient to exercise planes at night because you get less accidents you know what we'll do that i have to remember to change it back on today so this selects night and day just day just night you know what? I've never done so much testing in Hoifo to actually find out how viable these strategies even are. Day bombing or night bombing or night fighting. I've never really played around with them, so I'm not even sure how effective they even are. I just put them on day and night and just kind of hope for the best. Spy! Go for this spy because they are, are linguists and also a seducer. Seducer means you're less likely to be caught and linguist means you're more likely to get a nationality at the nation that you're based in. I feel like I want to go for Germany though. Yeah, Germany's going to be the big bad boy uh in this campaign anyway the villain so right now you've got a choice between three mills and three serves this one gets you more bang for your buck because a civilian factory costs more production than a mill see look the production cost of a mill is seven thousand two hundred but it's ten thousand eight hundred for a mill so they definitely get more bang for your buck for that one so definitely do the left one the left one definitely pays more uh, in the short term the only reason you'd go for the right one is if you're in an emergency situation and you need the mills we're just getting more upgrades now for our agency to get at least six upgrades and get that free spy then when we've got the political power we'll get elusive gentlemen pop now we're getting into the spy spies do take 30 days to actually appear though so the reason why we're uh, we have to wait okay developed the civilian industry now we're going to go for the extra research slot Making mills for Yugoslavia is a nightmare because a lot of your infrastructure is in the north and you don't want to build in the north because this is land that's likely to lose in the event of getting invaded. And I don't really want to be in that situation. So maybe we're going to build them here, even though the infrastructure isn't very good. 
not ideal but i don't want to be assigning mills in the north that we're going to lose and then what's the point of all that time and production we're putting into something we're never going to take advantage of kind of feels kind of pointless spy number two is boom ready this one is going to go in frankfurt actually no it's the south i want to connect all all these regions up because you can see here has an impact on enemies planning bonus and it also has an impact on their entrenchments so i want to try and reduce their planning as much as i can planning bonuses can be really painful you can remove like 50 60 70 percent of the damage just by having a max spy network also going to start working on engine three so it's, it's more worthwhile to go for the survivability studies however we research this we gain the armor but we can't even use the armor because we need the bigger engine to have the weight to put on aircraft so you still need to go for the engine ahead of time anyway all right bigger machine guns on the plane done disperse three followed by disperse four it's way ahead of time but i don't care and also we could start working on the survivability studies realize i didn't select a myo then so i'm going to click that off click it on again and make sure i sign the myo because if you sign the myo you get a five percent research bonus plus you get a funding injection into the myo when it's completed which gives you more traits and more stats chasing those stats okay see this arrow here it's indicate the myo has an upgrade so we can upgrade this plane to go for a more latest version and this myo will give extra reliability you know what in the context of planes i actually don't even know what reliability even does for planes i'm not even sure extra research slot we can branch out now you've got a decision here you either go for this one to boost infrastructure in the all of yugoslavia or this one just to focus on serbia and the eastern half so the eastern half or the entirety the eastern half will give you more stuff overall there's not a big difference really this one gives a bit of construction with this path gives steel so the right path is the better path because steel is just a more flexible resource okay we can actually build more mills which i'm going to build them in the more infrastructure dense regions i'll shift that up to the top up there there we go off we go another spy we're going to go for this one because he's a seducer and all the seducers for serbia right and then we also work on the more advanced plane and you can see now the impact of the mayo on this design look at all these bonuses reliability agility speed air attack all the stats that you need for a really good dog fire okay we're gonna import a little bit of rubber now only a tiny amount and the reason we're doing that is i want to maintain the production efficiency gain of this if we can max that out that means we can try and produce as many as we can and when the war kicks off we'll have more planes and we'll be in about more of a more of a flexible more approachable more stronger air force state the speed we build in these regions is so fast I don't want to do working conditions again no it's not worth it we're 99 stability it's pointless as you can see now we're attaching more mills on we're attaching way more planes and we're going to take advantage of all those planes we're in combat just me having lots of planes is going to deny them cast so their attack damage is going to be significantly less i think the big upgrade here is the serbian steel no i don't think it is actually i'm totally wrong i think the actual more civvies is going to go forward we're building our industry up we're going super tall right now we need to go as tall as we possibly can do so build up those factories all right december 938 it's definitely time to start focusing on our more core army now so we're going to make as many of these as we can train them and also convert you to the big division too we don't need to continuously exercise now and we'll select a general we do have a horse guy surprisingly so yeah sure the horse guy why not then a field marshal guy's slightly better because he's a planning guy sure Gonna work on more passive bonuses now. Artillery is going to be worth it. More construction is going to be worth it. Building our industry up. We have a little bit more time to plan than a lot of other nations in Euro. Like we just have a lot of flexibility to have a little bit more time to produce more aircraft and more divisions to actually be able to hold out against the uh, well, everyone around us actually. Yeah, everyone. Albania. Yeah, we're going to be completely surrounded. The only area we're not going to be able to, we're not going to worry about is Greece. But the entirety of my nation is going to be surrounded. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. All right, deploy these boys. Add them on. Belgrade. Keep training more divisions, eh? Well, now I'm going to need more infantry equipment, so I'm going to have to just reassign this really quickly. Now I need the steel. Now I need the steel really badly. Okay, we're back and forth, boys. I don't know what I want anymore. To be fair, these upgrades are better. The two civvies, steel, research slot. Factory output is 25%. It's not very high, and this gives a few factories. So these top three ones are the better ones anyway. Serbian steel. We're just going to queue up some more mills now. You see the infrastructure's gone up in these regions now because we've uh, gone for the focus. Deploy these more divisions. We need loads. We need at least... I'm going to say we're going to need at least 48 divisions total. We'll do the first army group first though. 24 divisions, then another 24 after that. I'm not going to go for anti-air in this one instance. And the reason why I'm not going to bother 
is because we're going to focus on our planes and our planes are probably going to pull all their weight. We're going to focus a little bit on and a little bit on trains. And I think we need to heavily tech into armored trains too because if we do get bombed heavy no we're going to rely on our planes have faith in the planes dave have faith in the planes. they can do it i believe in them serbian air force strong i'm going to select this and then assign another air wing and exercise to level three exercise only in the day this guy definitely needs to be a defensive doctrine guy more entrenchments going to go a long way serbian steel is going to give us an additional from seven to 46. As you can see what happened there, the multiplier from infrastructure has increased it significantly. That has solved all of our steel problems. I didn't think it'd be that much. So the reason why we're going for motorized and trains is we're always going to need additional supply and just having a little bit of trickling supply is going to go a super long way. We're also going to click on this plane and put auto upgrade. This will save us a bit of air XP when the auto upgrades course it just saves us a lot of time having to mess around designing new planes don't usually do this what i'm going to do is put these guys on silent intel network and what that basically means is they maintain the network but the chance of them getting captured is practically zero i don't think you can get captured when you're on silent actually yeah i don't think you can in this scenario it means now they won't get captured meaning i'll have a maximum network on germany when the war does kick off okay, the army size army Equipment, 250k. We need so much more manpower. What we're going to have to do is do local militias because this gives an extra 2% recruitable. 2% recruitable, that's the equivalent of like limited conscription. So we're basically increasing, almost almost doubling the manpower pool of our entire nation. And then train another 10 divisions. What we're doing here is training them, but I'm saying low priority. So the equipment goes to these divisions on the front line first before it goes into the training ones. We've got a new engine on the plane. Do we upgrade it? Sure. No, we need to wait for... No, we didn't have to wait for anything. We can just add on the bigger machine guns, which does more air attack without hurting agility too much. And then at the same time, we can add on self-sealing. The only downside of self-sealing compared to armor plates is it really hurts the range. I don't think we're going to have range problems. Ooh, this is a tough one. I think what we do is we produce this, but then when we run into rubber problems, then we change it back to the armor plate, right? Kick them out, produce them, let's go. And you can see the amount of rubber requirements gone up astronomically. We desperately need more rubber to keep the production going. It's a good one, that one, because it really makes you think it's like, well, it increases the stats better. It doesn't increase the weight as much. However, it does increase the resource amount. And that really makes the gamer kind of really strategic. I really like that what this is a strategy game no all right soft attack bonuses working on the basic guns basic artillery to sure our divisions have the most clout possible and we are going to work on our planes as much as we can as well deploy new air wings exercise to level three go 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 i was talking about before that you need political power to hire advisors but all these advisors are really bad maybe we just bank political power until the war yeah it's the only thing i can think we can do i guess radio is useful for the war support War support gives extra core defense territory up to a maximum 10% if you're 100% war support. So I'll take care of that. We're going to exercise the forces to level three now. Still need to train more of the divisions. Though. We need so many guns. We need to start chewing and spitting out these mills right now. Build those in the south. Once again, avoiding the north here because I know I'm going to lose this territory. And then we have a Danziger war. I'm feeling a, bit, a, little bit, a little bit sweating here, guys. I feel like this is actually a situation where I... Things could go really wrong. I want to keep up my production of my guns, but then I also want to keep up the production of our planes too. So we're kind of torn in what direction we're going to go. So we can go for the historical path here and end the Regency. What it basically does is it allows Peter II, who favors the allies to take the throne of Yugoslavia early. However, until he comes of age, I can't take advantage of his bonuses anyway. And eventually you get some good stability and war support eventually when he comes of age. But I don't think he comes of age until like, 1942 something like that but for now that doesn't help me however production output is useful and i can't do this when i'm at war with germany so i might as well just get this now take advantage of it and then i'll not have to worry about it germany would like to base our ships in our nation you're going to declare war on me so it's, it's actually italy that's going to declare war on me new plane start using it change the model okay. need rubber more rubber more rubber one of the advantages of going for the better chassis is it gives better overall stats you also get an extra slot what you could do is add more machine guns on or you get an extra slot at the bottom as well but i guess you're choosing between more air attack or more defense can we do that you can i guess we do a combination of both i guess we can't have the maximum machine guns. so we have four lights with with the uh, quad four heavies 
and plus the armor. I mean, this is the best we're going to get this, right? It's an expensive plane, but remember, quality, quality is better than quantity. The end of the League of Nations. All right, so just to confirm all of this, factory output, building slots, important. Soft attack, soft attack, soft attack. It's self-expansion, right? There you go. Building slots are done. And more soft attack. No, can't work on that yet. There's no plane upgrades that we need initially. Yes, we just do excavation. Just get more steel out of the ground, I guess. This is capital's done. So factories. Are we getting factories with these focuses too? Or tungsten. We don't need that desperately. A little bit of oil is always kind of nice to have. But no, oil is very important for me. I need to be in a situation where I don't need to import oil. We also have more building slots now, so I'm going to build them in all the, the key regions. We're pumping out those mills right now, but then to top that off as well, we're needing a lot of rubber to keep this production up. We might at some point need to make a little bit of synthetic rubber. Possible, possible, might not happen. I don't know. We'll see. All right, the boys, level three exercised. We have the first army ready, kind of. Don't feel too confident about it, but we have one army. I guess we train as many of these as we can. Yep, we need a lot of guns. We're definitely pumping out loads of planes now. Exercise those guys to level three. Get more soft attack bonuses. Reluctant to change this because we're going to lose some production efficiency. 55 a day to 27 a day. I didn't really feel worth it. We'll add a little bit more guns on from the mills to balance out. Need the steel. We'll trade that locally with the Soviets. Don't need as much rubber now, so just adjust that. There we go. What about support companies special forces we could focus on marines a little bit this will give us pioneers pioneers give a bit of river defense is that going to be useful for me not really i'm trying to think of ways that i can include special forces just to benefit my nation by going for a support company but there's nothing really i think initially is going to benefit me engineers are good for the defense but i'm not a big fan of entrenchment oh wait i've gone for horses so entrenchment's not even to benefit me because entrenchment only works with leg infantry anyway true Making a lot of these focuses kind of redundant. Mountaineers would kind of benefit me though. Have a look. What do mountaineers do? So mountain offense and attack with the rangers. I guess forests and hills penalties. You know what? This actually is beneficial. I think I would be massively benefit from that. Yeah, I would. I don't. Oh, but rangers are recon. Mm, okay. All right. We'll do it anyway. Pulse to it. And then we'll add on the rangers. But then we need the support from it with that as well. So we're going to have to change up the production a little bit more. Change the resources as well. Okay, I'm feeling more confident now, though. Meanwhile, in Europe, Poland, gone. France, gone. Norway, gone. Albania, invaded by the British, which seems to happen like every game now. It's really helpful, to be fair, because that means I don't have to defend that region. So we've just got Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, Germany, and Italy now. When I say it like that, it sounds still like a big mountain to climb, doesn't it? Deploy. Four air wings. Exercise to level three. Artillery. More soft attack. More, more, more. Fair minerals, exploitation, more resources in Vojvodina. It's this region. We're not going to be able to defend this anyway. I don't feel confident now. Oh, look at all the aluminium trade. Oh, that's so good for me. No wonder our industry is booming. I'm going to build in these southern regions, the ones that have uh, got low infrastructure. End of the day, I'll take advantage of those resources anyway. And then the back of this, I'll build a bit of infrastructure as well. Once again, I'm still not building in the north. Then build more mills onto guns and then we've got an upgrade opportunity from the maya which gives more max speed and agility you can't say no to that that's so important don't usually do this but we're searching an engine two years ahead of time two plus years ahead of time it's really with like a non-aggression pack am i gonna break the game here i'm gonna say yes this might create a one key scenario there's a maya upgrade for my guns giving extra defense oh, this is not worth it let's just do it and just see how much production efficiency i lost 95 guns per day to 95 oh wow okay wow a win i guess that's a big win deploy more air wings exercise to level three see a lot of the clicks are very repetitive that's why in my kind of shorter videos you don't seem to see a lot of these because they're just the same clicks over and over again just cycling back and forth back and forth no i would like to do our docking rights in yugoslavia yeah why not oil exploitation oh, look at that amazing oil in a region that we're gonna lose pretty soon that makes me super sad centralized management giving plus five output of all production yes Hungary has joined the Axis. We are now surrounded. I feel like I want to up my artillery production. Because I'm going to have to add some support artillery onto this division. Otherwise, it's just not going to have any stats to defend. Mm. There we go. We finally got rid of the deficit of guns. And we are back. Oh, and this event fires. Man, I forgot about this event. So the Macedonians can rise up because the Bulgarians agitate them. I need infantry equipment to, to squish them. It's kind of annoying because you lose... I guess we're losing building slots in that region, I suppose. But we've got the guns for it now, so we can squish them. It's just a waste of equipment. I really hate that. All right. 
anti-fascist raids and prosecute the IMRO activists. However, you do gain net plus 10 stability by getting rid of this. Let's do uh, martial law, max resistance, garrisons, and do the horse. The one that's the garrison horse, put it that way. Deploy these divisions. Pop you guys here. Another general. Yep. And we're going to pop them on and assign mo motorized priority one and two. We got enough trucks for that? Yes, we do. We need another five divisions for that army. All right. Don't usually do this, but super ahead of time for infantry equipment. Once again, we've run out of things to research, and we've got five research slots as Yugoslavia, which is super OP. So let's take advantage of it. I like that we're banking political power, by the way, because we're going to need to mobilize really quickly and also change our conscription laws really quickly. So taking advantage of that by banking is really worth it in the long run. Air Force Strunk running out of focuses. 1942, when Peter II comes of age. Don't want to select this though, because it means that when I change my conscription laws and my trade laws, it's going to cost more political power. I feel like this is hurting me in the long run. So just a heads up, I may have fluffed my history a little bit here. So under Prince Paul, which is the regent, not the legitimate king of Yugoslavia, it's Peter II, but he's too young. So Peter II favored the allies in this path. However, historically, mainland Yugoslavia favored the Axis with Prince Paul, which is this path. And when the Tripartite Pact was signed, that's what caused the coup to happen and then uh, eventually got invaded by the Axis. Don't technically want to sign this because it's the historical path. I mean, 939 anyway, I can do whatever I want. Okay, we have prosecuted the IMROs, but we still have this penalty here and it's not a core territory. To fix that, what you've got to do is destroy the IMRO by having troops based in this location. I think if you just move them here and then click destroy them you can do it yeah let's do that you have to base troops in this said location and then you can press the button um you, you get a net gain of uh stability so i think it's worth deploy the divisions add it onto the army i think we could probably try and deploy another 12 divisions we'll say another 10. i don't want to deploy too many i need to have a little pool of manpower because otherwise if you drop low on manpower it can cause problems also we can upgrade our guns by adding reliability that's going to be worth it because it means we lose less in combat We'll go for these ones here that give mills. I suppose we could focus on our doctrines as well. I've forgotten about that. We could do grand battle plan, couldn't we? Let's do some doctrines. We also have the ability now too to add on the mountaineer rangers. So what do rangers do? They add forest attack, hill attack, a mountain defense, and plains attack. You know what? A lot of those don't even benefit me that much. I was kind of hoping for more defensive stuffs. It's only 15 support equipment per division, so it's practically free. Yeah, I'll do that. It's free. Free freebie, right? Remember, when you've added a support equipment on, everyone loses their XP from level 3 down to level 2. So you have to exercise them again to get them all to level 3. And then, boop, they're all level 3 again. Oop, we've run out of manpower. To delete a few divisions in training. There we go. I realized, too, that we've run out of building slots. So we build in Montenegro. Build a bill. The way this worked is the Italians attacked the Greeks. And they wanted to push into Greece and form their greater... Italy ambitions, but the problem is they stalled. They initially pushed into the Greeks, but then the Greeks pushed them all the way back to the northern part of Albania. The Greek, the Italians got absolutely mauled by the Greeks. And then Mussolini asked Germany for help, and they were like, yeah, we'll help you, but unfortunately we've, it's going to be very difficult to supply this region of the world, so we're going to have to go through Yugoslavia. And Yugoslavia negotiated to try join the Tripartite Pact, and they eventually said yes, signed it, and then there was a coup, and then they aligned more with the Allies, and then the Germans invaded. And that's kind of what we're waiting for right now. And I that should have technically already happened. But I guess it's all a little bit delayed. We do raids here. So raids lose you 10 stability for clicking them. But you gain a net plus 2 stability when it completes after 120 days. So it looks like we're losing, but we also gain more party popularity. But if you realize, remember from our officer core, we're gaining extra stability through our officer core as well. So it will have more than plus 2 net gain of stability. It might be more than that. All right, next up. We're going to go for army maneuvers. Get those doctrines. Tempted to go for grand battle plan, but it actually might be better to go for mass assault in this case. We'll see how I feel. Okay, five days and we've destroyed the IMRO. Be a military expedition and remove them completely. And if you do it correctly, I believe you gain a core back into this region. This is a really cool mechanic. I like this. The game needs to do more of this where you lose cores because of unrest and stuff. I think that's a really cool mechanic. All right, I think we're going to have to build stuff in the north. I regretfully do it, but we're going to have to do it because otherwise it's just a waste of production. At least we're taking advantage of the mills, I guess. Bulgarian sentiment awakes in Macedonia again. Widespread Bulgarian sentiment. Well, we lost the core again. 
now. Pre-arranged Bulgarian territorial expansion. So Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria have the option to divide up. I think Italy has the ability to, to divide up Yugoslavia. And that's the first time someone's actually said that they have a claim on this specific state. More planes. We might have to max out this airport in Serbia, so we'll do that one now. Because the Western Balkans is all one big air region, what you can do is just get in the middle of the air region and you have 100% air efficiency. So it's like one of the best places just to stick planes. So just max out Belgrade and you'll be able to control this region really well and project your planes really heavily and do lots of damage to the Axis. We're going to rush Disperse 4, super ahead of time, but we've run out of things to research. We're going to do Supremacy of Defense for either Mass Assault or Grand Battle Plan. I'm not quite decided what we're doing yet, but we'll do one of the two. The Bulgarian-Italian attack into Greece has stalled. They really need the supply depot, otherwise they're just cocked out of this region. The Italian-sponsored rallies in the capital. A number of political groups have announced rallies in the capital this week. And they don't seem to have any specific grievances they want to air. They don't. Beyond a general sense that they should try to improve our relations with Italy and remove any political, critical Italian ambitions, either we gain fascism and upset the Italians, or we still upset the Italians, but we lose stability and political power. I feel like I want to do that one just so we gain more non-aligned, which is max our stability out again, and then we'll do more anti-fascist raids, gain us more stability. It was in a big circle. Deploy some more divisions. Yes, new general. Okay, this is the maximum amount of mobilization we can get before we run out of manpower. And there's no way we can get more manpower as non-aligned until we go to war or change to fascists or communists, which we're not going to be doing. My upgrade for artillery, giving it more soft attack. That's what artillery do best, soft attack. So improving that's a massive boost. Once again, some mile bonuses are really strong. Some of them are just kind of weak. For instance, boosting soft attack for artillery and guns is massive. A boosting hard attack for like artillery is practically nothing. I think we may have glitched the game by agreeing to that non-aggression pact. Tilly shouldn't offer me a non-aggression pact if he doesn't really want it. This has created a weird scenario where I'm just stuck here doing nothing. Deploy air wings. Exercise to level three. Same old. Again. I realize that it's the Italians that declare war on me, not the Germans. And I've got max doctrines too. So let's go for the theorist to make doctrines cheaper. Yep, I also have the option to go for officer cores. This one's a tricky one because I noticed someone in the comments said that this is not really necessarily a good focus to go for. Uh, sorry, officer core to go for because uh, it reduces XP by five. So technically you need to select one, two, three, four, five, six, seven doctrines for it to pay for itself. And now I say that out loud, it doesn't even sound like it's cost effective, does it? Yeah, why would I do that? Yeah, seven doctrines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it would only get plus five xp for that it doesn't really feel worth it does it i kind of want to do mass assault though the reason why i want to do mass assault is i get human wave offensive and we can go for that now that's insane so just train as many as we can do and then we're mobilizing an extra five percent that's why it's so strong five percent that's basically three times what we've currently already got and we're getting it for free basically there's no downside there's no extra training time there's no penalty to construction it's just a freebie Italy demands occupation of Delmatia. No! Okay, I think this might be close to war now, lads. I'm going to put one army here. So Z and X is the front line orders. Another guy, you're going to go here. I might actually do a four bat line here. So C and make a four bat line. But it's going to have to be a big four bat line because all of this too. Yeah, what I'm going to do is delete this. Collect the field marshal. And make a four bat line for the entirety of this front line. Then when you get to war... Oh my god, this front line is going to be so massive. Here, 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 here. And then when we go to war, we can make a field marshal front line and then build planning bonus. The problem is, is when you make front lines, they look, they're for each individual country. When you're at peace, you can't make individual front lines for the entirety of the faction. It has to be a front line for the, each individual nation. Anyway, it's like you guys. I'm going to sign you onto here, which is just control and then click. And then they just declared war on us. Oh my goodness. They declared such a good time too. I was caught with my pants down. The question would be now is what members of the Axis are going to join this war? I'm going to initially push into you here. I'm also going to put this on low reserves too. And then maneuver you guys into here and see what damage we can do. USA would like to send us a lend lease of 2,000 guns, but this is going to require 179 convoys. That's not going to be helpful to me because I don't have 179 convoys. I've got 101. 
And the downside to that is I'm going to lose my imports then. So that's going to be painful. I'm going to counterattack into Zara here and see if we can actually just pin them in. Okay, everyone else has joined. So what we can do now is select our field marshal, Z for front line, and hold shift and click on the front line. And then you can see it's created a front line for the entirety of the army here. What I do now is shift left click for these just two armies because this, these ones are assigned here. And, and click this front line. And then I can delete this fallback line. The field marshal, delete, click. Sorry, I did so many clicks there. I know that was a little bit overwhelming. But once again, you got to do what you got to do, right? Anyway, next up, air crew surveys. And I think we can probably go for... Ooh, air control here. Yep. Yeah. And I think we can get max coverage. Yes, we can. So in that case, we're going to go for... Instead of this one, we get a boost to range. We're going to go for air power projection 10%. Meaning that we're going to have more air superiority in this region. Things are going to get pretty hairy to begin with, guys. This is going to be a really bad spot for me to be in. And I'm just going to have to sit on my hands for the moment. Oh, I just realized the front line's not going across Bulgaria. Oh, because Bulgaria is not at war with me. Oh, that's annoying. I'll have to move them back over when we go to war. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need six divisions here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And we select seven, six. So I'm just basically putting seven divisions on this front line just to hold it in the event that Bulgaria attacks me. And that way they don't just grab all my land for free. So Air Force is up, Air Superiority more ground crews gives them 100 percent mission efficiency it would be less than 100 percent if i didn't have more of the air crews because you see that range penalty 1.7 percent it's very small but what we can do now is put the more air crews which costs command power permanently and it gives a little bit extra more range all right we're at war now so we could go war economy and we could also go extensive conscription however i don't think we're going to need it all right you guys are done what i'm going to do is put you guys on the front line and go over we are going to need to leave a few divisions behind because there's one port here, there's one here, then there's one here, then there's one here. There's so many ports in the south. So we're going to need extra divisions anyway to deploy just to hold this coastline. But I want the trained and seasoned divisions to be on the front line and everyone else I don't care as much about. Bulgaria has not joined the war yet, probably because they're not prepared. They don't tend to join the war until they've got troops on the actual front. Meanwhile, no one else is really attacking. Everyone's just making pushes where they can see gaps in the front line. And then a bit of a push in the north here for Slovenia. Do they have control of Slovenia? Slovenia is actually in two parts. I didn't realize that. There's no factories there, so I'm not losing anything. But luckily now, because we've got human wave offensive, we will reinforce into battle practically instantly. So that's really good for me. I also realize another upgrade that's going to be really useful to me is going to be rocket artillery because it has rocket rails, which is a close air support weapon. It's not very good. It doesn't do a lot of damage. However, it doesn't damage your agility when they go on bombing runs. So it can be helpful for me in the long run. All right. Our free fans wants to join the battle. I don't know why you're asking me this. He split up put me at war with Bulgaria, which I really don't want to do. Anyway, everyone's maneuvering forward. Bulgaria has finally joined the war now. They've instantly started to attack. I realize I need more troops on this front line. Actually, it doesn't matter. I'm going to delete the front line now and just extend the front line. And see the ones with the exclamation marks? They're not assigned to a front. So I'm just going to select them and assign them. And off they go. A few guys are wiggling around. Lend lease. Okay. 60 convoys. We can do that. This one is free because it's a connection by land. South Africa, we connect to them apparently. And 81 convoys, we can't afford that. So we have to say no. I also want to specifically say, which I don't usually do this, is reinforce all my upgrades directly to the troops on the front line. So basically, upgraded weapons don't go here into train divisions. They go into the actual front line divisions. Meaning the most soft attack and the best stats go into the divisions on the front and not get fed into training divisions which aren't projecting their stats anyway. That front line's a bit big. I don't want to be defending Greece. Surprisingly, we're holding out well. Trading really well in the air here. Oh, the trades are so good. And look at this. We have 71% air superiority. So we are actually dominating the West Balkans. And they have initially attacked. Oh my goodness. I feel like I want to last stand a few places. It's going to need command power. But at least we're just going to hold a little bit longer. It's going to lose a bit of equipment. Ooh, not looking forward to it, but I'm going to delete a few of these divisions to just reinforce a bit of equipment. I have 100k there. So what we're doing there is removing the manpower from training and equipment from the training. And then feed it back into the pool. And also, therefore, the troops on the front line will get that equipment first. We're initially making a push here. And once again, I'm last standing. And hopefully that'll just buy us a little bit more time. Once again, any bit of land that we lose here, we're losing a significant amount of factories. Look at all these factories in the north here and resources too. I just don't want to do that in this scenario. That's why I want to hold on as long as I can. The longer we hold on for, the more likely we'll hold in the long run. Anyway, research is done. 
I said we're going to go for rocket artillery, so we're going to do that. We'll get some fighter bombers with rockets. Also, I'm going to upgrade my artillery here. Is that really worth it, though? The difference in stats is so small, it's not worth it. You can come tend to upgrade quicker than you can produce brand new. However, if the stats are not really that much different, what's the point? Now, the stats aren't that much different. It's like tiny, like one or two extra soft attack. Also, the guns here have an upgrade from the Mayo, which gives extra breakthrough and soft attack. I can't say no to that. It's just so worth worth its weight in gold that we also have an upgrade for our Mayo for our fighter which gives extra max speed and agility worth its weight in gold say yes say yes say yes all right we're holding kind of i bet the losses are very high so click on the little notepad on the theater here and if you see over the last month and 12 months it's the same anyway we've lost 5k manpower that might not have been updated and you can see the losses we've lost on the front line as well be aware that these numbers won't update automatically. Uh, the battle will need to conclude before it actually updates on screen. Actually, division recovery guy, we'll go for that too. This reco recovers my organization after a battle has been won or lost. So therefore, we can get into battle and ready again for another part two. Or part three or part four. How many parts do you like? National focus. What is going to be the best one in this scenario now? Division training might be useful. I'm not sure if division training affects divisions that are in the training queue or just the ones that are on the battlefield as well because you've got to train new troops when they're lost on battlefield so i'm not sure which, how it applies for both that's something i've never tested before oh we're training these guys 25 percent quicker it's probably going to be very handy so we'll do that all right here we go last standing we are going to deploy a bunch of troops and we are mobilizing some more we have maximum war support so we're doing everything we can do to try and hold ground here extra soft attack go for the assault rifles pushing onto belgrade really aggressively i don't like that at all i'm just gonna micro just a little bit in the north here to move you guys around and i can see we're losing this area so i'm retreating out pulling back i can see we're gonna lose it so that's why i'm just gonna push all the way you guys are pushing into here maneuver around Looks like the front line is absolutely collapsing as well. I'm not really liking this at all. Losing Belgrade is going to be painful because that's where all my industry is. To be fair, this is the region that I lose. It's all over because there's just too much steel. If I lose the steel, that is just GG. Okay, cavalry defense guy. This is going to be super handy. So what I'm going to do is remove the more air crews, assign this. Eventually, when cavalry leader finishes, this guy can get it as well. However, we desperately need the cavalry high command, the extra defense here. We can't do that until level four. He's working on it, though. He's leveling his way up. He can get there, I believe. These guys are definitely broken, so I'm just going to manually retreat them out. These guys are looking broken, so I'm going to manually retreat them out. Once again, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm going to get pinned. That's the reason why I manually move them one by one by one. So I can stabilize around Belgrade. So I'm basically keep pausing the game, force speeding it, force speed over and over and over again to try and stabilize all the front lines. We've lost a little bit of Croatia there. Pushing in the north here, that's really not helpful. Last stand is going to cost us 63 command pound. We have nowhere near enough, so we're not going to be able to do another last stand for a while. Meanwhile, the air control, we can do more air crews again. We are dominating the air, but the amount of planes they've got is so big. That's why they're able to hold for so long. Losing Belgrade is going to be bad because the airport too, and that loses all the advantage we've got. Another air wing will deploy that, even though it's low XP. The, look at the map trades here. We have high, higher air attack, higher agility, and higher speed. We are doing so well to hold this. Right now, this area is definitely broken, so I'm going to manually retreat them out. Ideally, in a perfect world, what I'd like to do is some kind of fallback line that's like this. Yeah, that would be perfect. I'm going to pull a few divisions off and actually drop these guys off here too. Sign it onto this general and fall back line. What I want to try and do is this is like the final pocket. So I micro the entire to the front line, but the final desperate move is to hold it on to this Belgrade area. We might even cap before we even lose this area, to be honest with you, because we're at 25% anyway. There's a chance here I could try and build so so. One, two, one, two. What I'm doing is clicking here and building up the forts in these regions. The, the cost-effective amount of forts is two or three. After that is diminishing returns, but each fort reduces their attack capabilities by 15%. So it just kind of pay for itself, really. I'm also going to go for construction engineering because this increased fort build speed by 20%. That's pretty big. Also, we could go for this guy, which increases stability whilst at war by plus 15. Which still hasn't given us any stability. I wonder why. Oh, it's only for offensive wars, not defensive wars. Oh, that sucks. Well, that's kind of pointless now. I just want to get rid of that guy. There you go. You can unassign high commands, by the way, just by clicking them and removing them for free. He, he was gaining fascism as well as non-align, and I really don't want that, so it's not going to be helpful for me. Maybe an extra fort in Belgrade. Ace pilot has been founded. Yes. Oh, another big port. 
in the airport as well. So what happens is when an area is currently being in active combat, it can't build. So these two areas in Serbia are active combat, so we can't build a fort in areas with combat. But the good thing is that if these can't be built, we don't lose the construction production. It gets pushed down the production queue. We're just building in this region anyway. Once again, having to manage my retreats here and just be smart where I treat my troops. I don't want to be in a situation where we're getting circled here, so you've got, you have to manually pull out slowly. Otherwise, you're going to risk losing loads of troops. This has already lost this area here now. So I'm just going to move this guy here just as next to security. And then I'm going to retreat you guys out just to pull them out the front line. That's good. Then we move that over and then retreat out. Because so once again, I don't want to end up getting encircled and losing troops. So that's why I'm manually pulling out in different areas. And they have an issue here where they kind of clump up when they're losing, which is really annoying. Air Doctrines. Let's take care of that now. Don't need that. We don't. Well, there isn't an air theorist for Yugoslavia. What do you know? I didn't even know that. Anyway, yeah, the one we're going to go for is air superiority, ground support, naval, air superiority, efficiency, agility. They're all the ones we need, and that'll give us a massive advantage in the air. We also have some aces. Can we assign them? No, we can't. Get rid of this one division. They've overstacked this air base, and that's really annoying. Because that means I'm going to have to manually get rid of some air wings. It's the allies that have done that. Ah, that's really annoying. I hate that. Anyway, manually retreat away. Ooh, British have arrived. Lots of divisions too. Okay, Bren. All right, all right. Well, Bren has a habit in Hoi 4 of not helping you out when you need you the most. You know, like the lowlands, France, you know? France, where are you? Bren, where are you? Well, help us out. All of a sudden, they've arrived and pulled the finger out. Look at the size of these divisions. So what's happening now that's in my favor is the front line is getting narrower. And because of that, we can concentrate more of our divisions and therefore hold the front in a more effective, more well-organized manner. And I'm actually feeling really confident about how the way this front line's falling down. It looks like it's chaos. Actually, I'm feeling really confident about how well this is going. I really dislike this. The AI now is creating traffic jams in my air zones. Thank you for the ace. But I don't want to have to delete my own air wings. Oh, that's really annoying. Okay, now we've unlocked Ambusher. I don't even know if this even benefits me. Let's find out. So Ambusher for Joseph. If we go for it, is it going to extend the amount of entrenchment we get? It does. Does it? Plus five, then plus five? Yeah, it does. So even if you're using horses, which aren't even really good for entrenchment anyway, you get an additional bonus for entrenchment by going for the infantry guy. If you think about it, really just really sit down and think about it. It doesn't even make a lot of sense, does it? Anyway, command power. We want to go for the cavalry special. It gives extra five defense. That's going to be helpful. And I realize we could stack ambusher as well. Oh, and this is what... There are so many traits we could go for that'll go a massive mile and help us out. Losing manpower really aggressively as well. But surprisingly, we're still holding and Greece is still holding. So that's really good for us. And Britain's counterattacking in the south, which is also good for us. What I'm going to try and do to help the situation with the planes is build another airbase. But there's really no way to build it. Game. Game. I don't know why the game doesn't let you just build airbases on actual provinces. Like they have to be designated in certain locations in states. That doesn't make sense, really. It's kind of a strange thing that's hard-coded. To say we've only lost... How many divisions? Two divisions from this massive encirclement. Oh, I am really happy with this. I'm proud of my boys for this. We're about to run out of fuel. We don't need the rubber anymore. Import from, um, from the Soviet Union. Sure. Inject that fuel in there. Planes go, fly. We've got max aces as well. We're doing everything we can. I also went for this HP guy as well, just to hold on to the manpower a little bit better. We are still mobilizing, but manpower is getting a little bit tighter than it once was. Meanwhile, building up the bunkers. Come on, guys, let's do this. This supply area is disconnected. So what I could do here is connect it again to the capital. Yep. I realize that this looks disconnected as well. I could do that. It's going to be tricky because we have like no civilian factories right now. Pocket of Yugoslavia. Hold! Oh, more aces. And they're all getting assigned on too. That's good. Oh, look at the ratios too. They have 3,000 planes here. And we're just trading 27 for nothing. 35 for nothing. 41 for nothing. Oh, these trades are awesome. Plane very, very strong. No more trade with the Soviet Union because we've run out of fuel. We've run out of civilian factories for fuel. Oh, we're completely blockaded now. So we can't import anything. That's really bad because we're going to run out of fuel. And I think we suffer from a penalty for our Air Force for that. This is probably one of these few times that it would actually have been more beneficial to go for infantry, leg infantry. But right now, our planes are suffering from a lack of fuel penalty. So their efficiency is dropping, but they're still trading really well. I question sometimes how important fuel is in Hoi 4. 
because tanks don't suffer from a stat penalty when they run out of fuel they just travel at one kilometer per hour and planes just lose air efficiency but they're still combat effective so it's like what is fuel even doing in hoi i feel like you can just ignore it and be quite happy oh we've lost the steel ah that's really stings on a question pack with the soviet union i don't know how that helps me hold i mean the trading's not as good now maybe the stats are getting affected ah no manpower as well i wonder what i could do is something like this take this off and then add on artillery Have we got enough artillery to do this though no we, maybe we just do remove one just to save us a bit of manpower but we're surprising that we're still holding i can't believe it greece is getting consumed albania is getting pushed oh this is so much fun for me guys i, I know you guys probably like oh this is a fail but man i really enjoy this i love it when i'm on the edge of my seat and i'm actually having an intense game this idea that i already know the outcome like it's pre calculated in advance it's just kind of lame to me but this is super fun okay myo time we could go for the infantry weapons designer and select a policy and this is probably going to come super in handy productions resources needs but you have more penalty if you're low on the resources not sure how useful that's going to be do it anyway let's do it we're in a good spot when it comes down to the resources we've got because we've got an, just enough resources already pre-stockpiled i guess maybe you want to produce no we haven't you haven't got any naval dot yards anyway we don't need support equipment to be fair we don't even need trains just the guns we mainly need isn't it guns and artillery okay guerrilla warfare is one of the most op defensive strats in the game and that's kind of what i was aiming for it's a shame i wasn't able to do it so in the event you are a skill two general or more which is not difficult because they're all pretty much skill twos or you have the trait trickster one or the other and you're in a defensive phase you have the ability to reduce the enemy's combat with by 50 percent yeah, definitely. That's the one we're going to go for. Can we see a guerrilla warfare? Close combat is good too. Bridge rush is really good too. I'm just curious to see if we can actually see guerrilla fighting actually happening. Bridge defense, bridge defense. We're actually holding to a degree where we don't even need to do anything. I can't believe this. This is insane. And the Air Force is still trading really effectively. I say this all the time, but this might be an instance where something like quick improvisation might be useful because it reduces the cost for last stand by 20 and gives you a bit more command power it could be quite useful just to hold ground just a little bit longer i know we're holding Ooh, there's a gap there's a gap there i guess what we could just do is just make the front line go all the way across and then sign everyone onto the front line and make a front line careful though because you built a trenchment up and they're going to be wiggling on the front line so just be aware of that and that's why they've chose to attack here again but once again they're not moving and we're completely decimating their air force. This is working favorably for us. Still need to sort our manpower problems, though. We're experiencing attrition? Where? We control Albania? Albania? No, we don't. No, we don't. I'm feeling really confident about this, guys. Like, we're all in position right now. And we have a decent air force. And we're trading really well with their air force. I think what's happened here is... Yeah, they have. They've done Barbarossa. So, just by going for that Italian non-aggression pack early, I put myself in a situation where I've delayed their attack on me by six months to a year then when barbarossa happens germany pulls all their divisions off this front line and pulls them northwards and if you look most of the divisions aren't even german a lot of italians here bulgarians hungarians i realize we could even take sarajevo back yeah we could oh this is so perfect and that gives access to manpower 20k manpower and factories back as well the industry's waking up i suppose in the south too could we try this oh this is risky living on the edge it's doable though and it's working so could i complain no no we've got the option to do it for rockets now oh we can't have that on because we've not got the model for it but i am going to research the latest model now could we try and take this port back it's a bit difficult because there's just so many divisions here and it's hills and that's pushing it a little bit too far it's only really possible if you can see that the supply situation is really dire but right now we're holding so i'm super happy with that and supply is looking really good the reason the supply is so good is due to this one because we're reducing our supply penalties by 20 percent due to the fact that we've got proper heritage with the horses horses are supply and they were supply for quite a large number of the period of history so that continues to be the case fortress yugoslavia oh i'm so proud of this honestly i'm so proud i can't believe this is holding so well and once again if the greeks keep holding i'll keep holding and we are a massive thorn in the side for hitler here yes 
One of the signed aces. Add the aces on. They get big stat bonuses. And because we've got so many aces now, we can even think about going for airborne heroes. Increasing ace effectiveness, which just means the amount of damage the aces do now just gets extremely high. They're attacking into us again. And it doesn't seem to equate to anything, though. You can always get them on the counter attack. It's usually a good strat. See that shore bombardment is happening here. It's uh, the allied fleet in the Adriatic is shore bombarding on the support attack here. And pushed. Yes. Grabbing a supply depot here is massive. I don't want to use convoys to do supply with this arrow. So I'm going to build another railway here. We are well and truly Tito's guerrillas fighting in the mountains of Yugoslavia. Kind of. All right. Construction engineering. I'm going to go end the Regency now. We're actually going to bring back Peter the second. Maybe I could like squeeze the south a little bit just to ease them a little bit here. It's going to be difficult with the mountains though. Nope, they're breaking. Oh, this is insane. Forces in the mountains. Whoever said that would work and the Italians are getting absolutely wrecked. Wow, it's all coming, all coming down. It's all coming down. And then broke another mountain in the south here. That's insane. So what I want to do is really capture my core territory again. I'm going to get a massive injection of manpower when you go into that region. So the way it works is if we're at 7.78% recruit orb, the minute we take these states, we get the entirety of the manpower fed to us immediately in one go. It's not the real the way mobilization really works, but it works that way in Hoi, and that gives you a massive injection of damage. Counterattack here is huge. Oh, the damage. Can we go here in the south? And then there's an encirclement possibility in the north here. Pin you in. Don't you go anywhere. No, no, no. And pin. Oh my goodness. Encircled. Looks like the allies are trying to counterattack here. It's not going too well for them though. Building up an airbase in our capital region because I don't want them to overstack my airbase. I'm trying my absolute best to stop them from doing that. We're behind on planes now. We are, I'm afraid. Oh, that really sucks. So we get rid of one of the air wings. Also, starting to work on more passive bonuses. Don't want to work on the better artillery, though, or the better guns. Can we import stuff? We'd have to import it through ports. And unfortunately, they can get wrecked and sunk. Ah, we'll do it. Balls to it. We actually have an industry now. That's insane. Just because we can import all that steel. And it looks like the, uh, the Allies have control of the Mediterranean. Hence the reason why they're destroying the Italians. And that's the reason why these convoys I've got right now are totally safe. Which makes me feel super confident. I guess I can also get some trade with america too and that gives me fuel so my planes are going to be at maximum effectiveness now oh that's so good and that means the power projection here is massive look nine to one ten to one the ratios are super in my favor in fact they have no planes up here anymore now do you know what we're going to add the rockets onto this final one now rocket rails yep I'm good with that. Yep, this is now a fighter bomber. Unfortunately, because they're a fighter bomber now and they're not just a fighter, they, they have their own classification so that you don't reinforce the old planes. You have to kind of deploy new ones, which kind of sucks in my opinion because I feel like it, how that should work, you know? I also realize I made a mistake here. I also want to get rid of the self-sealing because this means I have to import more rubber. That should make the economy situation a little bit better. It has. Oh, it so has. If you see the excitement in my voice, guys, it's because I never thought I would hold that. I thought that was over. I really thought that was ogre. And take this city back. Maybe this city back. I'm trying to grab the victory points because if I control a state, then my manpower is going to get a massive injection. That's desperately what I want. I'm going to change the icon for this so it looks a bit different. Whoa, the Soviets are pushing back. This is the quickest turnaround of World War II I've ever seen. Am I the contributing factor to this? Possibly. Peter the second. Hey, boy. Are you going to become of age soon? I think he will be. When I think of the people who, who comment in my uh, YouTube comments, I always imagine them to look a bit like this. Dave, why don't you play as Paraguay and conquer all the world with only artillery only? This is the face I imagine. Dave, why don't you play Liechtenstein and uh, take out America? Yep, that's you. Sneaky little push in the south and it's going really well. Okay, I'm going to put everyone on careful. I'm going to make a push and I have a feeling... Yeah, we're getting a lot of ground. So what I was doing is probing attack, just teasing the front line just to see how far I could go. And I reached a point where I realized that, yep, I can keep going. I'm doing a lot of damage. Let's keep going. Let's see how far we can go. And as you can see, it's going really well. And I'll call the manpower now, 57k manpower, because it's all been flooded back to my front line. Nice. Logistics are looking mighty fine. I'll be honest with you guys, I couldn't have not planned this game any better than the way I did this time. Honestly, everything has just went perfectly fine. The stockpiles of weapons are just absolutely perfect as well. The production, the amount of things that I put things into. Uh, the last stand of the time I did it, exactly the right time. 
I mean, everything has just gone absolutely perfectly. I'm going to go for the infantry guy. I don't even know these points even benefit me, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, like this could not have gone any better. Recapture a bit of Italy. The hu ultimate humiliation of Mussolini. Yep, Zara is now mine. I'm going to move the front line from here to here because this is technically where I want to push into. So X, right click to draw the front line. And you use Alt and click to maneuver the front line over. And the reason I'm making a front line here is I'm getting planning bonus up to a maximum of 68%, which is just huge. We're about to recapture one of my core regions as well, which has the oil in it. Well, I should just know it's this one. But regardless, we're about to capture it anyway. Got him. And then this one, Nova Sand. Don't be Nova Sand. We're liberating you. I can't believe the damage we're doing. Planning bonus 60%. Commander skill 35%. Air support 20%. Air support? Air support's giving damage? I'm so confused because I didn't know that's the way it used to work. Do you know one thing I've just realized as well? I forgot to change the spies over to build a network. Whoops. I wonder if I would have been able to hold better because they were using planning bonus. That's a massive oversight by me, by the way. I could have held a lot better if I had my full network here. Now my intel advantage is 3%, where before, was it 3%? And then we've got Nova Sad now, and now we have fuel. Oh, this is so good. Capital of Bulgaria is in Macedonia. Nice. I'm gonna ask for access for the Soviets so the front lines don't split here. And then I'm gonna activate the battle plan because I'm pretty certain we can make big pushes across the entire front here. I think we can, we're just absolutely demolishing them. We're gonna just start disbanding some of the old air wings, but then we've got the new air wings coming, which are the fire bomber ones, so they'll be able to do a little bit more extra damage. Just a little bit extra. Import a little bit more rubber. Don't need as much steel now. So we're getting it from our own regions. And once again, still trading super effectively with planes. What was surprising me is I was getting air support bonus. I've never seen that before. I wonder if air support is just something the allies are giving me. Romania's capitulated. Was it Romania? And we've just taken a massive chunk of land from them just because we had a big contribution to their war effort. And we've maxed out our artillery. Anti-tank as well. Sure. I'm going to put them on aggressive now and attack. Because right now there's massive gaps in the front line. And I want to just push into them and chew through them. And that means we restore ourselves to Greater Romania again. Greater Romania 2.0. Frontline collapse against the Soviets here. This frontline looks like it's collapsed as well. Bulgaria encircled in the south. I cannot believe how powerful horses are in Hoi 4, guys. When I used them as China, I was blown away. And now I'm using them as Yugoslavia, and I'm blown away. I just want to see if I redid the war against Germany, but I had my full intel network at what difference it would have made. I'm just blown away by all of this. I really am. Italy has entered the civil cavalry guys leveled up to an expert now. The way the officer course system works is you can assign someone to the officer guard. Oh, it's not this guy. It's the other guy. This guy. Assign them into the high command by making them a high command guy. So basically giving them a desk job and uh, gives them the ability to get these bonuses. But as they level up from level four to six, they gain the, the expert bonus and then level up to level eight, which is rare. You get the genius bonuses and you can see the genius bonus are plus 15%. So it's normally sometimes a better idea to do the high command and level the guys up slowly over time than it is to, oh, Yugoslavia's cap too, than to uh, hire the high command because some of the high command counts might not be very good. Like this guy's a bomber specialist. He might be a better idea to level him up even though you can't get Air Force guys. Maybe they'll add that in a later patch. Paradox, maybe you should do that, huh? Prince of Terror, reduce the amount of damage to garrisons. Martial law, yeah, sure. Better plane now. Don't know how it's better though. The white one is the exact same. The game bugs out like this sometimes. That's really frustrating. I really hate that mechanic. Don't need as much rubber. Oh, actually, no, we do need more rubber. It's because we're upgrading. So basically, we've been lending a bunch of planes from America, and the UK, and the Soviet Union. What we're doing is basically upgrading them to our version that's got rockets and machine guns. It's really kick-ass. We'll import the rubber. Don't need the steel anymore. Fuel-wise, probably need significantly less of that too. Now we can deploy air wings. Exercise to level three. Got a bunch of old planes that we've got from capitulating nations. It's kind of cool that we've got them, but I don't care for them. Man, asking for access from the Soviet Union was the best thing I did because this has made a really nice, organized front line. It's so beautiful. Oh my god, the capitulations here. My contribution should be massive for this. Let's have a look. Am I a minor power or a major? I'm a major. My contribution is 38%. That's huge. When are you going to come of age? I want to make you king, Paul. 
want to make you king. And the massive encirclement to the east here. Once again, I'm just battle planning here, guys. This isn't like sophisticated combat or anything. I'm just battle planning and I'm doing so much damage. This guy's leveled up really well too. He's got six into attack. This guy's done pretty well too. Massive pocket to the east here. Massive damage. Italy has capitulated. The other Italy. The bad Italy. And they're all bad Italy's, aren't they? Apart from the one that's on our side, I guess. I want everyone on this front line now. Let me connect them up. This front line. Front line. Attack. Off you go. So you do control click when you assign the divisions onto the front line. Be very careful what front line you assign them onto. Because if you assign it onto a front line that isn't like your main one, you might like unassign generals and field marshals, which can just cause a lot of problems. I'm going to control B too. You can see control B. I'll pause. We'll pause. Control B, you can see the toggling between railroading and moving. I want to railroad, get to the front line quickly. When you're railroading, though, you lose all your uh, organization, so just be aware of that. Oh my God, we're just filtering through here. Can we just grab Berlin? Just truck into Berlin, guys. Leipzig, we just saw, we just met Tommy and Dresden. No bombing of Dresden this time, and boom, Berlin. Berlin is ours. We're going to narrow the front lines, because then we can concentrate all our forces into a very more narrow choke point. And I'll control B them again to get to the front line. I don't care right now because I'm in the Allies. I know that they're going to control the front lines and they want to import guns. But Lend Lease. And they've sent me too many guns because the Lend Lease. So therefore, I lost all my convoys again. The Lend Lease guys really don't Lend Lease too many guns. America's got a habit every single game of just Lend Leasing too many guns. All right. Deploy fighters. Attach them onto my army. Going to do air superiority, then close air support. That means any ones that can do both will prioritize close air support. Attach them on. Send them off. Yalta Conference. You would like to send us guns. It costs us 115 convoys. We can't. We haven't got enough. 101 convoys from the Raj. Once again, we've not got enough. Don't send me any more, please. Well, we're getting so many victory points with this too. So I'm going to go for Hamburg. And then Stuttgart and Nuremberg, and Frankfurt. All the big victory point regions and we can cap Germany really quickly. 60%. Don't need to care about this front line. We'll let the allies take care of that front line. I can't believe how much damage the horses do in Hoi 4. It just blows my mind. They're definitely nerfing horses in the future. They do way too much damage. Michi France has joined the Axis. Really weird time to do that, but France doing French things. Bad France. I think that should be close to capping now. 89%. Ooh, I'm not sure I've left Berlin open. Ooh, push into Hamburg. Oh, we certainly need to take Hamburg. Of all places, this is like the last big capital city too. They'll probably cap when we take Hamburg as well. 96%. Come on. GG. So, Greater Yugoslavia. What's that going to look like? Yeah, all of this. All of this. Austria no longer exists. Who needs Austria anyway? Bulgaria? Bulgaria. Real country anyway. I'm just taking all the land that I can do. And then if anyone else tries to take contest the land that I've tried to go for, I just basically say no. And eventually, if they get more points, uh, eventually they might get more points. But we have 44% contribution where they have 33%. So I think right now, everything we ask for, we're going to get. And eventually, because we've got more contribution, every time we pass, we have more points than them. So always our demands are going to override their commands. Yes, 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 yes. Grab Bohemia. No, we can't do that. That's too much. Yes, yes, yes. So every time we make a demand and then say it's ours, the cost goes up but remember we have more contributions so every time we end a turn we have more points than they do so we're always going to win these contests pop and then we can ask for the fleet no we have no points left at all so we can't ask for the fleet polish fleet polish fleet that doesn't even make sense they've won the war it doesn't make sense but whatever all right done that is a beautiful yugoslavia civilian oversight sure maximum garrisons sure and them all back home. I am so proud of this campaign, guys. I thought it was going to all go pear-shaped. I thought I was going to have to be a government in exile. And this has gone incredibly well. I am so happy with this. Look at the size of this Yugoslavia. Oh, it's massive. So what I've gone for is civilian oversight here. The reason why I've done that is to gain compliance. And all this territory we're going to own. So I want to just take advantage of all the resources in this region, really. Exercise the fleet up. More research. What do you even do at this point in the game? You've technically already won... Britain's kicked me from the faction because I've caused world tension from taking too much land. It makes sense, I guess. But 1936, Peter II is 12 years old. It's going to be like 1943, 44, isn't he? Until he comes of age. To build civvies in all the areas with the high infrastructure. Go for the cores first, then go for the non-cored non land. Important resources. We're still going to need rubber. Don't need fuel anymore, though. Because we've got it from Big Romania. Deploy more fighters. Exercise them up. I'm going to go for anti-tank guns so we can get uh, cannons on the planes. I want to join the Allies. I think if I declare war on Japan, I'll be able to join the Allies because they'll, they'll request it. 
Myo improvement, soft attack and breakthrough for guns. Yes. Oh, here's a better option. Join the Chinese faction. Join the war against Japan. Then use all my civvies to build airports in China. Send over the massive fleet of planes. Oh no, this war is going to turn around pretty quickly. We also have the ability to take over control of the faction of China. So I am now... With, it's changed to the color of Yugoslavia from the Chinese United Front. I like the novelty of it. This is even a thing you can even do. All right. The artillery boys have arrived. I've added a lot more soft attack onto them with the artillery. Add the boys to the front line. Draw the front, back, front line there without the shift click. Off you go. Sign all the air wings onto them. Air superiority, then close air support. So all the ones that can do air superiority are activated. And the extra ones that can do close air support are activated too. Attach them on. Air bases are almost constructed. Build, build, build. Need more rubber. They're on the front. And we're going to do a careful push. Yeah. And the planes have arrived and they're doing all the cast damage. And we've got way more agility than them. Better air attack, better air agility, and better speed. Just demolish the air force for uh, Japan and also big airports building them in China. We're almost like developing China for the future. It's almost like we know what direction China is actually going. Investing into the future. Okay, go aggressive now. We're just, we're just absolutely demolishing them. We're doing way better than I expected. If you alt click and then drag the little circles, you can uh, draw a new front line. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And they're just closing the front line by themselves. God damn, the damage. Is it the air force? Is it the horses? Is it the speed of the horses? Do you know, I always never factor that in though. The speed of the horses is a big factor on how much damage they do overall. I always forget about that. We can improve this now by adding on cannons. It's a little bit late though, isn't it? Actually, these ones, anti-tank cannons. These have got an insane amount of ground attack. However, you lose a huge amount of agility when you put these on because these have to get really close to the enemy to actually fire at them accurately. Um, so that's the reason why rocket rails are really good for dogfighting. There's an alternative firing method where uh, air attack do really juicy damage but not as effective. I guess what I could do is maybe add another rocket rail on. I always forget I can do that. Yeah, let's do that. And then upgrade the existing ones. Then what I can also do is with the upgrades is go for the tech that allows you to upgrade quicker. 40%, 40%. Massive improvement upgrading capability. 40% is huge. More rockets. Whoosh. Just slice through the center here so we can cut them off from east and west. Oh, we're pushing through like there's nothing there. So I'm just going to right click on the victory points and the supply depots. Because I'm almost certain this is already over now. Here it is. Oh my god, we're just demolishing them. Oh my god, this is eye-wateringly bad. AI, what are you thinking? Right click on you, and then right click on you. This is like such a cakewalk. I can't believe how unbelievably easy this is. Map doctrines out now. Yep, you can even do special forces doctrines. I think the speed is playing a big factor in this. Do you know what? Speed is something I don't care too much about. And it feels like it's something I should care about because I think the damage you can do with it is just insane. China's like, well, th thank you, Yugoslavia. You've you've kind of sorted me out here and and, uh, and uh, changed the war definitely in our favor. It was definitely a stalemate between the both because both sides were like super exhausted. Take two point, take two point, and capped, capped, capped. Germany has declared war on the Polish Soviet Socialist Republic. Germany's back, boys. Here for a second round. That means the Axis now has declared war on the common term again. Okay. Of all the peace conferences I've experienced this week, this is probably probably one of the more safer ones and probably one of the more pretty ones. Cleared them up. Totaled. Defeated. Beaten. Don't have any landing craft. We're going to have to research that. Build airports in Korea. This is a staging platform to launch into Japan. Oh my god, look how many planes we're producing now. Deploy the boys. Also, it might be a good idea to try and add extra fuel range as well, because we have air control now. So I tend to prioritize away from armor and prioritize more towards fuel to give the extra range and then upgrade. More rockets, more fuel, more range, more damage. Yes, yes, yes. Military parade in Yugoslavia and Italy. What? Yugoslavia and Italy. I didn't even realize, but I have a puppet state in Italy and the Vatican exists. I never even realized. Okay. Damn, I feel special. I did so much damage against the Italians. When the civil war happened, the faction sided with me. The way the Italian civil war works is that the person who has the most contribution and the civil war happens, that faction automatically becomes the puppet of the one that has the biggest contribution. Boys have arrived. Time to do logistical strikes. You guys can do a superiority. So logistical strikes is where you're specifically aiming for trains, trucks, and also maybe convoys as well, and railways and supply depots uh, to deal damage to. Um, however, it's a mission that I think loses you agility when you do it. Let me just check that actually. 
You see it in here, maybe? Logistical strike. No, in this case, I can do logistical strikes without losing agility because I'm using my rocket. Nice. This is one instance where we're getting low uh, air efficiency and it's because of the range. So one thing you can do is hop into here and go centralize control. And this gives you a little bit more air efficiency, which takes away some of the penalty you get from the range. It doesn't increase the range. What it just does is it allows them to have more air efficiency and remove some of that penalty. This is like a net loss on our planes right now, but we're able to trade because our industry is so unbelievably massive. So it just doesn't matter. So are we losing more planes than we're putting up compared to their planes? Yes, but look, their numbers are going down and mine's just at 2,300 and isn't moving because we just can outgun them just with superior flow. Oh firepower literally in name Gone through all the game by using world war one trucks and all of a sudden we're like you know what maybe we should update our trucks we've reached that point eventually it's arrived modern trucks required I'm building infrastructure and buildings inside of italy so i can integrate them more because i kind of want to annex them i don't know i think it'd make pretty borders wouldn't it just have this leg the boot of italy maybe that'd be kind of cool right the way autonomy works is when you build inside of a puppet you gain more autonomy it moves to the left left means more integrated right means more independent and you can integrate them into an integrated puppet, getting more of their factories of manpower. And then eventually you annex them, costing 300 political power and then completely eating the entirety of their land. You don't get any compliance from it, though, which I thought was a kind of a rubbish mechanic. Uh, but you just gain all the land. Should be thankful for the land, though, right? We have spies inside of them. Can we have a look at to see how many trains they've got? Oh, they have zero trains. <laughs> OK, so we've completely destroyed their logistics by bobbing them to death. And the trucks are the trucks going down nah they're kind of balanced but that's what we're kind of doing here we're hitting the trains and their trucks with logistical strikes and that's what's doing all the damage and they're losing planes in the process too so we're gaining air superiority so it's definitely worth in the long run also got some more planes we can add on here yeah more planes sure and now they're bombing the home islands as well we need trains right now we can integrate it's a little bit more yep lend lease from america 84 convoys we actually can do that now because we have so many convoys through capping all of our neighbors Spy master, get another spy from China, sure. Excavation tech, we can also get dig for some more oil in, in Austria, sure. Naval invasion, two days. Do we have naval supremacy to do it? Yes, we do. Thank you, Britain. Thank you, America, for putting up their ships. And there's nobody here. Nobody home. When you make this naval invasion, make sure you push really quickly because the straits here are going to be very painful to you. Remember, you're using you're using horses which have a really bad naval invasion penalty so just be aware of that you want to push those straights immediately and get over them immediately because otherwise when the uh, when the japanese arrive and they block a straight you'll never be able to get over it unless you change the division from a horse to something else push 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 go 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 did a field marshal front line too so therefore uh, all the other troops will come flooding into the front line and off they come. What is happening in this game? This is the wonkiest game I've played so far. The AI has just fallen over, keeled over, and just not even bothering to play the game anymore. Literally rage quitting AI. Oh, I know what was happening. I was cast striking that region. That's why I was doing so much damage. That makes sense. Puppet Japan. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Then I grab all the other states. And once again, my contribution is 30%. And the only one behind me is China. So China is the only one who could potentially say to me no. And they have, they want Taiwan. Uh, actually, no, they want a bunch of islands. This island? Oh, of course. No, you can have that. Awajima. Yes. Contest. Demand. Demand. These are all contestants from America and Britain. So we can definitely win them. There we go. And can we ask for their ships as well? Sometimes you can't get everything in the peace deal. Just keep clicking a few and then eventually you'll get all of it. Kind of strange in the new peace conference system. You've got the ability to end a peace conference, but you haven't got enough score to take everything. So it leaves weird situations like Japan still existing. Oh, no, Japan has been completely annexed this time. But this is Yugoslavian Japan with a different monarchy of Japan. What a world. This is probably the best Yugoslavian run I have ever done. And I always wondered to myself if I'd activated the spies in Germany, how this campaign would have unfolded differently. Look at me. I have Yugoslavia. I'm huge. I have all of Japan's mainland. I have all of Italy. That is just insane. So Battle Empire has been capitulated. I think uh, China's going on its little ambitions right now. The Brussels Treaty has been signed. Oh, this is NATO. So there's an ability late game where the allies can form NATO and then you get the cl a classic Cold War situation. Germany still exists though in the Rhineland, but we have the allies and axis form now. Well, allies and common terms, shall I say? Look at that China. Like, God, I'm so big. Eventually, China now wants to start unifying uh, all of China. China wants to form China. That's right. That's what China naturally does. 
I was going to annex Yugoslavia, but it's going to take a while to do that. You see the autonomy points ticking down each day as I build inside of them. A really cheeky way of building inside them is doing loads of supply depots like this. And you get loads and loads of autonomy for that. It's a really cheeky way of doing it. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, I've enjoyed this video. A like and a subscribe would be very nice and kind of you. I really do appreciate that. If, if you don't want to like and subscribe for this awesome run of Yugoslavia, you want to like and subscribe for an independent Kurdistan. Wow, look at that beard. Wow, he's a freedom fighter. Lad, lad, look at those stats. If you enjoyed this video, this one on screen will be a natural video that you'll want to progress onto because YouTube thinks this is the natural part two for you. Apart from that, lads, I hope you have an absolutely awesome day and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.